Good day for our friends. It is a, what is it? It's a little bit foggy out there. It's a little bit frosty out there. It's a frosty, foggy October morning. It's a Wednesday, year of our Lord 2019. Um, and we have a new project on the table and what a lovely looking guitar. I've not fully inspected it yet, uh, but it is a Fender Stratocaster. I have no reason to believe that it is not what it says on the labels, one of you, and it's a beautiful looking thing. And um, I'm not beat about the bush, this has come in for a refret. Does it need a refret? Not really. Frets are fine, not a lot of wear. They are, however, quite low and quite flat. And the owner of this guitar has said, I don't like low flat frets, I like high round frets, big ones. So, we're going to refret it. Uh, not only are we going to refret it, the owner also does not like uh, lacquer on his necks. He says his fingers stick to it, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to remove the lacquer from the fingerboard. It's been, looks like it's been partially removed off the back, certainly been rubbed down. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the fingerboard. Uh, there will be an extra charge for that, obviously, which the uh, owner of the guitar is aware of. But as far as I know, that is all that needs doing to the guitar. It's obviously going to need a setup, so I'll be giving it a thorough checkup anyway. We're checking all the electrics, checking all the switching. It has had a some kind of Seymour Duncan upgrade in there, which is fantastic. Um, the tremolo is bolted right back to the body, so I imagine the owner does not use the tremolo. I will have to check back and check my notes. Um, so I would think this is going to be pretty much straightforward. I've already bought the fret wire. Uh, we have gone with Sintoms Elite, which is my fret wire of choice nowadays. Uh, you would find probably on a guitar like this, it will have 12% nickel silver. I've been using for the last three or four, two or three, four years, I've been using 18% nickel silver frets. And recently this year, I came across Sintoms Elite, which is Sintoms are a Belarusian, are they Belarusian or Polish? I think they're Belarusian, based in Belarus. And I have some of their tools and I've stopped buying their fret wire and they do have a new fret wire called Sintoms Elite, which is 25% nickel silver, which is really quite hard. Certainly much harder than the stuff that's on here. So it'll be super long lasting. Not hard as stainless, so it's easier to work. Not that that really matters anyway, because I've just upgraded all my fretting tools. But uh, that's what we're going to do. We are going to install some Sintoms Elite fret wire on here. And that really is about it. So there you go. I would also think that that pick guard is an upgrade. What about you? Uh, it is a made in USA model. It has got a Z50 number, so it's a 2005. I think mine's a Z8 or something along those lines. It's something eight anyway. It might be an M8. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Take no notice. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Made in USA on the headstock. Regular tuners as are on my uh, 2008 standard Telecaster. Just a great looking guitar. I love the standards. I think they're fantastic. Uh, as a great blank canvas with fantastic you can buy one and use one as they are but I do personally like myself to upgrade probably the switching and maybe the bridge pickup but what a beautiful looking thing one of my favorite color absolutely fantastic so what I'm gonna do is I am before I start working I'm gonna plug this in and I'm gonna play it I'm gonna listen to its beautiful sweet tones and once that's done we are going to remove so I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to remove the nut. I'm going to remove the frets. And uh, we're going to get everything prepped for the refret. So why I go and have a little tinker about on it and have a little play. Um, you go and do what it is you're going to do. And uh, I will see you back here sometime soon. Okay, I have plugged this guitar in and I have played it. And it plays really, really nice. It does rattle a bit, buzz a bit on the frets. But... The pickups sound beautiful, especially the neck pickups. I love the neck pickups. Fender neck pickups, I love them. But anyway, I've been looking it over, and because we have such a high action above the first fret, I'm thinking we may possibly get away with keeping that nut in there. Now, it's a good quality bone nut by the looks of it, but I am still going to have to remove it because I will be removing the lacquer from the fingerboard. So we're going to remove it anyway. Um, but that's it, everything else I think is pretty much bang on. We don't need to do anything major. I'm gonna have a pick guard off and have a look underneath, uh, just because that's what I always do. Uh, but I'm gonna proceed with this, I'm gonna get the strings off, 
We're going to get all the bits in a pot. We always put the things in a pot. I will get a spare one. In fact, this one, I just thought I was going to be done this afternoon, so that can go in the small pot over there. And this pot will be for these Fender parts. I'm going to remove a lot, remove the tuners. Um, we're also going to remove a neck from the guitar. I will have a look under the pit guard, check that all the wiring's okay, check we've got the proper pots in there. Blah, 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 blah. And um, get it all prepped and ready for the refret. So I'll be back soon. Strip the guitar, everything was pretty straightforward there, even removing the knot. How I remove a knot is, I, I should have shown you really. So let's just put the knot back in. And what I do to remove a knot, especially if it's lacquered over like this one was, is I get a Stanley blade or a Stanley knife. And what I will do is I will score the lacquer there and the other side. Score the lacquer, not cutting towards my own testicles because if I slipped, that would cause some damage. And once that's done, I'll cut around the lacquer here and here, and then I'll take something like a flat blade screwdriver or a drift, and I had this understand I had this in a vice, but I'd get right on the join there and I'd just tap it with a fretted hammer, like so. And we'd drift it straight out, which is exactly what I did on the other bench. It came straight out beautifully clean. So if need be, if that knot is high enough, I can reuse that. And that'll be great because it going it could be going back in. So neck removed. I do see that the lacquer was lacquer build up all along the frets, so I'm going to have to score the frets anyway. I will do this shortly off camera, but I'm going to score, even though I'm sanding the fingerboard, I'm going to score the lacquer both sides to stop me getting any chips, like so. So I'm going to do that across the whole length of the neck. I'll do that off camera. And just when I remove the frets, I won't get any chipping anyway. So let's put the neck aside. I removed all the hardware from the neck. We have two staggered machine heads there and two low ones there. Or well, too high, too low, so they are staggered. That is now ready for fret removal. We're going to put that aside for a moment and we're just going to have a look specifically. Well, before we move the neck, let's just have a look. It is dated. We do have a date and a name, which is great about Fender. We have May 18, 2005, which is right. Then underneath, in the sticker underneath, we have June the 8th, 2005, and a signature or a stamp, Perez. So there's a date. June the 5th, 2000, uh, June the 8th, 2005, and my name Perez, and a little scribble signature there. So that all ties in with the 2005 on there, which is fantastic. Normally we'll find a little something else in the neck pocket, not in this one. We do find it's got some woodworm. It hasn't got woodworm, but it has got a little damaged area there. Uh, it's sad to see that, you knowing that Fender knew that was there and they still let it pass, you know. But, no great shakes, there is, there's no marks in there, there's a stamp in there, but it's all painted over, so you can't see what's what. There's no reason to believe that this is anything other than what it says it is. So we can put this aside and we'll put this back in the case, put it out of the way. Uh, just one thing I want to mention as well, I couldn't move the treble over, I was getting my strings out, so I had to take the back off, because where the hole is, goes here, I couldn't push the strings out, and it's because the tremolo is blocked off, so I have absolutely no reason to remove that, and to unblock it, I will assume that that's how the owner wants the guitar. So I'm going to leave that as is. So I am going to actually move on to the neck. So what I'm going to do is going to prep everything for fret removal. I've checked the radius. It is a nine and a half radius on the whole length. So I will be sanding with a radius block. La la la, la la la, la la la. I'm not going to remove in any great height. I'm just going to basically rip back some of the lacquer. Um, the thing is, if I rip back all of the lacquer, it is going to make, you're going to see the fingerboard is going to go wide. So I may have to stain the fingerboard yet, uh, but it's something I'm considering. I do have some teak stain. I don't have any of this golden, vintage golden colour. I may have to go and get some Rustin's uh, wood dye, and we'll see what we do from there. Because And then what I do is I would oil the fingerboard. Just give it a coat of, uh, got some Danish oil up there, I've got some true oil up there, just to give it that little bit of sheen and to protect and seal everything so i've not decided what i'm going to do with that yet but first and foremost i'm going to get these frets out so i'm going to go along with my stanley knife i'm going to score each side of each fret and once that's done we're going to get a soldering iron on there we're going to heat the frets up and we're going to pull them and uh, once that's done we can look then at getting the neck i've built a brand new neck jig a sanding jig for 
fingerboards. And what we'll do is we'll attach some tape under there, some Velcro, and we'll get it clamped in. And we'll, uh, we'll get this re-radius. So I'll show you more on that in a little while. So as my time is so precious, I've taken the liberty of removing the frets already. And um, I'm going to basically remove the lacquer before I can do a refret. And how I'm going to do that is, I need to set this level somewhere. Um, and I built a specific, I built a jig for this purpose. And here it is. And it's a very simple uh, device. It is just a piece of MDF with two bits of wood screwed onto it with two bits of Velcro. And this channel is the exact same width as a nine and a half inch radius beam like so and what i do is with the velcro I tape the base of the guitar i will take go up to the end just there we'll get we'll centralize it we'll get it absolutely central i know it's 68 mil gap there so if i get this line on 34 millimeters the center line we have that's just about this is just for just to show you, just to give you a quick demo. I'm not going to remove anything. And we have, that neck is not going to move. Then we're nine and a half inch radius block. And it's just a matter of sanding off the lacquer. Now the thing is, that sandpaper is nowhere near abrasive enough. It's, it's only uh, 400 grit. I'm going to want something around about 120, maybe even, well, 120, 180. Maybe just get away with two quarter. And I'll smooth off with this. But we're going to basically remove the lacquer with a radius beam like this. And it's going to take quite a bit of work. I'm going to get some more coarse paper on here. You can see it is working already, but we are not going to be able to um, avoid removing the stain. Look at it, it's already removed there. Let's just get a cloth on there. The stain is already coming off. So I'm gonna to have to restain the thing. I'm gonna to have to leave it bleached or I'm gonna restain it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nip over to my little hardware shop, I'm gonna buy some new sandpaper, and I'm gonna buy some wood stain. I'm gonna take a nice light wood stain. The good thing about a stain is the more coats you add, the darker it gets. So I'll take a nice light amber, or probably a honey colour, and I will restain this. I'm of course charging for restaining. And once it's restained, I'm also going to oil the fingerboard before I install the frets. Um, so, let's go and buy some sandpaper. Need to properly centralize this neck anyway. Then we'll come back and we'll get this done. Um, that's looking pretty good actually, but I will still come and centralize it anyway. So, stay tuned. I'm going to have a go with the Allen key. I'm going to make sure this neck is dead straight before I continue. Once I'm happy that it's dead straight, we're going to come back. I'm going to get some uh, more coarse sandpaper on here. We're going to rip off all of this lacquer. We're going to then smooth it off with some 400 grit again. And then we're going to stain fingerboard before we install the new frets. I've moved on a bit with the neck and you can see I've got, well, I say all of the lacquer, I've got most of the lacquer off. There is still a problem in this area, which is strange because the neck is straight and it's darker here. And it seems like there's a still, a, it seems like there's still lacquer on there, but there's not. So it must be, there must have been a darker part of the wood before it was stained. Anyway, it's probably white was stained. They probably used the blotchy ones to stain. But anyway, how I have leveled or removed the lacquer is, I don't know if it's radius block or radius sanding beam, some 80 grit sandpaper on there. Very good, so keep giving it a brush, and I've really worked at it. And this is quite coarse sandpaper, it's 80 grit. So we're gonna go with a fine sandpaper in a bit. Just trying to remove as much as I can without damaging or going too deep and checking the level, or checking the straightness of the neck. Now the truss rod now is now let off. It is completely loose, well not loose, it's just not nipped up. And the neck is straight, which is what I want. You see, this is attached with Velcro. This is measured down the centre. Fortunately, the gap between these two pieces of runners, or the two pieces of wood that I'm actually as runners, is 70 mil. So I know the centre line is 35 millilitres, which I've measured. And we're just going to take the very straight edge, and we're just going to check the straightness of the neck. We're going to assume that the radius 
sanding beam is correct down its whole length. There's no reason, no reason not to think or believe that. So that is an I can see there it is straight and again we're going to check this and we're going to follow the line from the neck. We're not going to go like that because that will give us a false reading. This will give us a true reading. So we're going to have a look and that's good because we did have a bit of a hump but now we are straight or we're certainly straight enough to get some frets in there. And again this side and I am well happy with that. I'm very happy indeed. So that is all good. So what I'm going to do is, see look, where I thought I might be staying, it's not because I can feel it and it is wood. But you'll notice a keen eye on you'll notice there are some small lines down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some smoother sanding paper. I'm going to take some uh, 400 grit. And we're going to go across that again. Now, where's my nine and a half? Bear with me a second. Here's a nine and a half. That has some 400 grit on there, but I'm not going to be using that because that's old and dirty. But I'm going to get some fresh 400 grit on there. And now you're going to see why I put masking tape on here before I use a double sided sticky tape with them. The masking tape peels off real easy. Look at that. Now if that was double sided sticky tape, I'd have residue of sticky tape all over there. So I'm going to resurface this. I'm going to put another piece of 400 grit on there. Gonna bend this and I'm gonna come back and we are gonna smooth over the fingerboard, get rid of those lines. Once that's done, we can stain that fingerboard again. Now I have gone and bought some Rustin's wood dye, the closest colour I could get to this uh, vintage amber was um, pine colour, and I don't think it's gonna be quite be yellow enough. But what I'm prepared to do is I'm going to get some of this, I'm going to put it in a pot and I'm going to mix in with it. I'm going to mix, I'm going to yellow it up a bit. I'm going to probably mix in some turmeric, which is slightly darker than that. And with a good mix, I'm probably going to get a stain very, very close to what is on the sides and the back there. It is not paramount I match it perfectly because I'm going to also be oiling the fingerboard and it's going to darken it up slightly anyway. So I might just go with a little bit of this. I'll go on a test piece. I've got plenty of this scrap, so I'll go on a test piece and we'll see how close we can get. But that is for another time. That's something I'm going to do a little bit later. First and foremost, we need to get this smooth. I mean, I could get away with it smooth as that, but I'm going to go with some 400 grit. This is, what, this is 80 grit. Some 240 might be all right, but I'm going to go with some 400. I'm going to smooth it all off. I'm going to hope the stain takes on this bit. It should do. It should be absolutely fine. So stay tuned and I'll be back soon. So let's see what smoothing off with some 400 grit looks like. Now I've already ran over a little. Just cleaning up paper from using. We've got a little bit stuck in there. That's very strange. We don't normally get that. Let's see where we are. That's because I think there's still a little bit of lacquer left in this part. Very, very pleased with that. Now let's see where we are. And that is beautifully smooth. And that's great, and I think that is good enough to stain. Certainly good enough to refret. I'm just gonna check the level with my um, precision straight edge. I'm gonna give it one more go. Not where I can feel anything on toward, it's just, I wanna get this spot on. End of the day, it's neck straight and my frets go in level. It's going to be a great neck to play. My next big challenge is to get the stain on the top to be close to what's on the sides. I may just stain this and not oil it yet. I don't know. I imagine the stain is going to stay on. It doesn't need to be oiled. Um, so I'm, I've not decided whether I'm going to do that or not yet. show you the back side some of this has already been rubbed off 
The thing is with this, it is lacquered clear, then it's lacquered, the amber is lacquered on top with a tinted lacquer. So you could basically remove the tinted lacquer and just still leave lacquer on the neck. I was not going to do that here. We needed to get all of the lacquer off. I do believe that we have got all of the lacquer off. It's just a bit, this wood's a little bit darker. And I would imagine they use anything that's not up to scratch to be not lacquered. They use anything with imperfections in it to get it stained up. Uh, it makes complete sense to do that. Just looking down the length there. So while we're here and we're on camera, I'll take my Veritas straight edge when I remember where I put it. There you go. This is a precision straight edge, 50 quid worth. I don't know what the tolerance is on this, but it is proper level, proper flat. And let's have a look down there. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That is a straight neck. That is as straight as any neck I've ever had in this workshop. So I'm really pleased with my sanding technique. I'm really pleased with this jig I built last week. I've already used it for two jobs. And it costs four quid. And a bit of Velcro. Oh, look at that. Absolute beauty. What I will do before I stain and refret this is I'll get it set up on the other table and we'll get the camera flat. And you can have a look at this. Oh! my goodness i'm not bragging but i'm good i am really good praise the lord for that before we go and stain this fingerboard to match the sides and the back uh, we're going to cut we're going to do a couple of things and we're going to recut the nut slots to make sure we're deep enough let's be careful because these edges are filled in so when we go in when i cut this way i need to come in and i need to cut forwards and when I get to this side, I need to pull back just so I don't crack my lacquer on the edges. And I've already done it. So all the nut slots are deep enough. We've cut through nice and clean. We've got no chipped areas on the edge at all, which is fantastic news. And then what else we need to do is check that the radius matches what we need it to be. Nine and a half inch radius, nine and a half inch radius gauge. And again, I've checked it and it's beautiful. And we are a nine and a half inch radius down the whole length of the neck. And I am very happy with how this has turned out. How good is that? Even down to the other side of the knot. So that's brilliant. Really pleased with that. Again, taking the Veritas Precision Straight Edge. I can now see properly. That neck is as straight as anything I've ever had in. It wasn't when it came in, but it is now. That is just beautiful. It, this is all about getting precision tools, building the right jigs. I do build my own tools. That's the second neck jig I've built. One for sanding fingerboards on removable necks. And then one for levelling um, a fingerboard on a set neck or glued in neck. And this, my friends, is fantastic. You could not get that straighter by hand sanding. Really, really pleased with how that's gone. So, next thing I've got to do is I'm going to take some scrap pine. I have pine left over from building the jig last week. And I am going to stain using some Rustin's wood dye. I'm going to apply one coat of just stain. And I'm going to apply at the other end a coat of stain with a little bit of turmeric mixed in. Just to darken it up. And I'm going to get as close as I can to this. And once I've found the right formula or the right mix we're going to stain this fingerboard we're going to just slightly tape up the edges just so we don't get any run over but this is all about the first coat because the first coat is what soaks into the wood uh, and it is the most important part once i've done that coat by the way i'm not going to work on this neck for eight hours it's all about getting the tone of the first coat right so if it's too light I don't want to be building up with extra layers of stain. I just want to put one, maybe two coats of stain on this and that will be done. It, for whatever wood this is, it will be maple, won't it? It's quite a hard wood. So I don't think this is going to take stain that well. I think chances are, once you've done put a coat of stain on it, if you give it a gentle rub with some sandpaper, you're going to actually bring it all back. Uh, I need to make that first coat right. Maybe I will seal it with oil. I've not decided yet. Oiling this fingerboard will not be a problem. Because if I get stain in there and I seal it with some oil, the oil is going to help us by also soaking into the uh, the slots for the frets, the fret slots. 
and it's going to slightly, slightly soften them up to accept the frets better. So if I do go the oil route, it's going to be a good thing. I've not decided yet. I'll go and do a little bit of reading up on it, see what uh, Dan Erlwine says and some other people, get other people's opinions, and I will decide from there. I think we can completely forget wood stain. Um, the wood stain was not anywhere dark enough, and what I've gone with is, believe it or not, put some turmeric in a pot, a little bit of water, got a cloth, and I have rubbed on basically turmeric paste, and that looks really good. Bear with me a second. Just have to whiz back into the kitchen, get a little bit more water in that solution I made. I need more to make in there, but that is all it is on there. Just taking a teaspoon of turmeric paste. I could even go a little bit darker, but I don't want to go darker because if we go any darker, all I've got in there is stuff like tandoori and that's going to make it red. I don't want it red. I can mix a little of the um, stain in there, the pine stain. I'm just going to bang some more of that in there. Don't forget, it always dries a little bit lighter than you think. So, I'm going to shake up a little bit of this stain and I'm just going to apply another coat. It's not quite as dark as I want it to be, but it looks pretty good. In fact, it looks very good. I'm going to put a drop of this in. If it's not dark enough, I will get go and get a drop of the teak stain as well and drop some of that in. This pine stain is a little bit red. And I don't want it red. So I'm just going to run. That looks like a beautiful curry paste in there now, doesn't it? Looks fantastic. I'm just going to try a little bit of this and a piece of blank wood over here. That's how I got the turmeric colour. That's on basically just sanded wood. That is too much. It's really vivid. But it didn't work like that on the neck. So, I'm just going to take a little piece of this and just try it on this wood. And look at that, that is certainly is darker. So let's go with that. Got nothing to lose by applying this. And that's darkened up a little, isn't it? End of the day. We'd get away with leaving it like this. Totally get away with that, it's fine. And all I'm doing is rubbing in the paste. I don't think I'm going to get it to go any darker than that. Thank you guys. That said, I'm happy with that. I'm going to let that dry. And I can decide whether to stick some oil on there. I am very, very pleased with that. So what do we think, guys? Are we good with that? I am certainly good with this. I'm not going to say it's come out better than I expected because it, oh, it hasn't. It's come out. It's come out pretty well. Let's be honest. Let's make sure we've got all the uh, paste out of the slots. I'm going to take a picture of this and send it to Russ. See what he thinks.
course I'm going to let this dry and I'll cut these fret slots again See what the owner thinks. If you want it to go a bit darker, we could stick some teak stain over the top. I'm, I'm reluctant to do that. I want to keep it. I like to keep it this yellow. But I'd like it to dry out. I can't put any frets in today. I've got to let it dry out. And then maybe we'll go with a coat of oil. So this is going to be. It's not going to be a normal two, two and a half, three day refret. This one. It's going to be. It's going to take a week. Not take a week to do, but it's going to be. You know, I'm going to have to take my time over it because it's not something I can just do and get on with. The thing is, with a fingerboard like this, with no oil or, or lacquer on there, it's going to stain. It's going to get dirty, it's going to get grimy, and the wood is now open to the elements. So it's open more to humidity, to cold, to heat. I'll be thinking, a coat of oil is not going to harm anything. Like I said, I'm going to read up on it. Certainly going to let that dry. I think that is pretty good. Okay, it is quite a bit lighter looking from this angle. But if we go darker, we're going to change the shade. I don't want to change the shade. I'm just going to try a little bit of this on top of the test block just to see what a difference it makes, if any because it won't hurt to layer things up because if it's going to go too brown I'm not interested certainly it is a little bit closer isn't it let's try a test piece here it's not making any difference at all. It's making a little difference. It's certainly going brown. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly sand this when I've got this coat on. Now let it dry, see how it goes. You know what? I'm glad I've done that. I'm quite glad I've done that, I'll be honest. You know with strings on and frets, you're hardly going to tell a difference here, are you? Clean piece. is considered that is as good as I'm going to get it I think and you know what I'm pleased with that I'm really quite pleased with that I'm going to let that dry for a few hours come back and have a look just get all this uh, paste out of there don't want to dry That is probably as good as I'm going to get it. This bit's not taken as well as this side and the rest of it. And there's probably still a little bit of lacquer left in there, but I'm going to leave that. I think I will go with a coat of oil. Let's have a look what the camera's saying. 
Mm, looks a little bit blotchy. I think I'm going to go with a coat of oil on there once it's dry. Just to give us that smoothness. I don't think we could have got it any better than that. So yeah, I'm going to go with a coat of oil. I'll see what oil I've got up on the rack. I think that's still a bit of lacquer on there. I'm going to leave it now. It's too, too far gone now to sand it back. I'm not going to sand it back. There you go, guys. I'm sat a little bit further back than I normally would be just to show you something on this neck. Now, as I've mentioned many times before, necks are never 100% straight. And this neck is no different. There is a very, very slight um, dip in this neck, round about here, frets five and seven. You're not gonna be able to see it from here because it is so small. But I'm gonna try and hold this on one hand. Now this bar is every straight bar, but here, it's around this kind of area and it is very, very small. Now I don't want to sand any more off the neck to level it, which I've already done, I've re-radiused it, but that dip is there because when I'd re-radius this whole neck and remove the lacquer, there was still a buildup of lacquer in this area, meaning the neck was never straight, it was always uneven. And to remove that lacquer, I've dropped the neck down a little bit. So I've re-radiused again, but I didn't want to remove any more material. Now I'm going to show you the depth of that little dip in here, around about areas five, six and seven. And I have a feeler gauge here and it's 0.05 of a millimetre. That I believe is a 20th of a millimetre, which is almost a hundredth of an inch, is it? Very, very tiny. And I'm gonna go on area on fret five and I can just almost get that under it. Don't wanna go under. Area six, there you go. 0 0.05, that is a 20th of a millimeter. So what I'll do with this, because I don't want to remove any more material from the fingerboard, as always, and something I need to explain, the playing surface of the neck is not the fingerboard, it's actually the frets, because the frets are the highest point. Um, so what I'm doing is, I'm putting the frets in as they are, and I'm gonna level the frets. So your level is going to be the frets, not the fingerboard. We always get the neck as straight as we possibly can. Now. I probably really wouldn't even have to have mentioned this because there's no way with the naked eye you're ever going to know. It's just something I want to point out. I can only just see the gap. Looking up at the light there, holding it up to the window. You're not gonna see it from where you are because I can only just see it here. It is so tiny. I just wanted to explain that and bring it in, but a neck is never perfectly straight anyway. So I'm now ready to refret this. I've cut the fret slots. I have stained the fingerboard as best I can. I've put three layers of linseed oil just to give it a little bit of, so it's just not so woody, it just gives it a little bit of sheen. Uh, your fingers are not gonna to stick to this by the way, but it is gonna protect the wood, it's gonna stop dirt getting in. It's a very, it's not a super close match to the headstock. I was always going to struggle matching that. Uh, but I think well, I made a pretty good job of that there. It looks pretty good. Once the frets are in, the strings are on, it's on the guitar, you're not gonna notice any difference. Really pleased with the radius. That's fantastic. Uh, and the neck is virtually 100% straight. It's 99.9% .9 straight, isn't it? There's nothing to worry about there. So I'm gonna cut the frets for this in a moment. I'm gonna cut them to exact width and uh, I'm gonna get it refretted today. So come back for little updates now and again. I will be sporadically back. Something I wanna blob on with today and get done if at all possible. I was considering putting another coating of uh, oil on there, but I know the owner of this guitar doesn't want uh, he didn't want the lacquer on there because his fingers stuck to it. The lacquer was pretty terrible, actually. My, even my fingers stuck to it, so, uh, you know. So I don't want to overdo it with the oil. I think three coats on there, I think, is absolutely fine. It's going to be fine. And it's something we could do every five, six months, just pour a little coating of oil on there when it's being really strong. So anyway, I'm going to blob on, get the frets cut, and uh, we're going to have this one done today, I hope. So, moving on, I'm going to be cutting the frets to width. Uh, probably just overlap a very tiny bit so I have less to trim off later down the line. So let me show you where I'm going to be at with these. Fret wire we're using is St Tom's Elite 25% nickel silver, the hardest nickel silver fret wire I know of. Uh, the regular stuff I used to use would have been 18% nickel silver which is still an upgrade on the original which would have been 12% nickel silver. So 
fingerboard all ready for the frets we can remove the velcro or the tape with the velcro on it because we're not going to need to put it back onto the jig because it's all done just get rid of this tape and I'm going to show you how we're going to cut the frets so I already have some fret wire left over from previous work I will go ahead of myself one day and end up getting a free refret. So there you go, exactly the same fret wire, 2.8 mil wide, 1.4 millimeters high. And I'm gonna cut them to length. Should get two out of this one. See where we are, oh, that's pretty good. It is slightly over radiused, got plenty on there. Let's give it a cut. See where we are, look at that, loads on there. Two out of that piece, might even be able to go further up, but why would we? Yeah, we could do. And there you go, we've got fret four and fret seven done there. So what we need to do is, we need to remove some of the tang here, which I'm gonna do with my, again, Sintoms, Tang nipper or cutter. Fret tang nippers by St. Tom's. These will even cut stainless. How do I know that? I cut stainless steel frets with them last week. So it's just a matter of getting the fret in there. Just need to adjust slightly. See where we are. Fret inside there. Give it a nip. It's beautiful. It's not quite cut clearly there. I've not adjusted these properly, to be honest with you. So let's see where we are with this one. Did I say fret four? Not wide enough for fret four. Well, you know what? We're going to go with frets one and two. That's perfect. See where we are with this one. That's perfectly wide enough for fret free, so we'll go with fret free. We're going to just snip the ends off like so, and now we have a fret cut to width with nice flat ends. This one will fit fret number three. Very happy with that. Stick it in the fret holder, fret free. This one for fret seven. These are slightly over radius. We'll probably get fret eight there out of that one. Certainly over radius. And there you go. We'll have that one in fret eight. This one in fret three. Great stuff. And we'll start cutting some more. Fret one, fret two, fret four, fret five. Easy with fret six, we can go right up again there. Fret, tw fret 22, it's good to get five out of one piece. So I'm gonna get these caught, wow, that's one wide. One, two, four, there you go. I'm going to get these all cut, get them all cut to perfect width, get them lined up and um, come back and we'll get them in. So I'm going to crack straight on this refret. All the frets are going in at once. I am going to use some um, 
tie bond original as basically we're going to use it as a um, gap filler it's going to fill the gap between the bottom of the fret and the slot so I'll just tip some of that on here thing is once this is out I can't faff about I've got 30 minutes to use this otherwise it'll be gone off so I've got 30 minutes to get all the frets in so I'm going to crack on with it I will not be uh, I will not be slouching I need a wet cloth which I've got here for reasons that will become apparent in a minute and what we're going to do is just going to get some glue and I'm going to do three or four of these at a time I'm going to just do two for now just to show you how we go on that's solid let's get three done let's do three and it's just a matter of getting these slots filled in wiping off the excess like I say no faffing about whatsoever with this and this will be I'll be glad I put some oil on this uh, fingerboard now so once we are ready to get them in we're going to line them up just going to tap the edges in like so I have a little block there just for this one end piece because that's the same thickness as the heel and I can just stop this cocking up as I press in and that one is in beautiful get out of the way where I needed it for that one fret pressing in Pressing in with our excess glue, which we're going to wipe straight off, like so. Wipe off the top there. Beautiful. Dry cloth, wipe over any excess glue. We don't want to be leaving that there. And I just as a matter of course, it's just something I do. I'm going to go in at the reverse angle as well. Get that lined up there. So it's beautiful. First three in, job done. Happy with that. Very good. Move on to the next three or four. Gonna crack on, get them all in. I'm gonna clamp these all down at the same time. I'll be clamping up with a nine and a half inch radius beam. We're getting the lock clamped together. I'm gonna crack on, get them done. Back soon. No faff in there, frets are in. Um, we are going to clamp down. They all look to be seated really nicely, so I'm not going to hammer anything down, I'm just going to stick them in as they are. And I'm going to grab this gubbins here. Let's just turn the vice around. get this where it needs to be rest the neck on it where the neck needs to be that's perfect with that on there get it central beautiful beautiful grab the clamps block of wood jobs are good and one orange, one blue. You keep everything central. Just between frets one and two on the first one. That's good. Bring it in central. Can you see that? Can just see that. I'll just move that camera. Just see where I'm at there. Here you go, as that. That's a little bit better for you. Bring this central, that's good. Not quite far enough for that one, we need to bring it right up to the end. There you go. As long as we're over fret one, we're good. Right, a bit more in the middle. Go on 
the centre, that's good. And there you go, all clamped up, frets clamped in, nice and straight, and the good thing about having these clamps that way and like that is, we have a stand and we can just stand it up, out of the way, it's on a stand, everything's clamped up central, give that a good hour, move on to something else, come back and finish that one in a while. Morning guys, apologies for the view, but um, it's 5.30 in the morning, and I have my night light on but <coughs> it's only like good enough for me to film <coughs> at silly times of the day like early in the morning or early in the evening being as it is autumn time in England or the fall as you call it across the pond there and anyway I've already edged and beveled the frets I did that on the other bench uh, just using basically a flat file uh, with the neck clamped up in a vice and I've been across with a fret rocker already this morning, just checking which spots on the frets are high. And we have a few high spots, nothing too major. And uh, I have some new tools, and I'm not going to use my new fret leveling tool. <coughs> it's called here, which is for fret leveling, which will work fine, absolutely, I'm sure. But, it's my personal opinion that this removes, it puts too much, too many scratches on the frets and it's still not level so I'm going to do it with a flat file my favourite flat file being my Swiss made one it's a number 4 cut file so it cuts really smoothly and I'm going to do it with this I have one perfectly flat side which is this side this is where the high spots are marked in green pen I don't think you can see it under this light but I think this is going to Already, that's level. Let's check the next one. Beautiful. Just check one back, one forwards. Once I stop getting any resistance, I know I've removed enough material. Hurt to go across the whole fingerboard of this file because it's level and flat anyway. 
So if you've got any high spots I've missed, just will find me. Let's have a little feel there. Beautiful. 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 So that file is saying we press R level. Mark them all up. We'll give it a few scoops with the 240 grit on the levelling beam. And if all the pen comes off in a few strokes, we know we press a level. And then I'll get my radius beam. Now and a half inch radius beam, we'll put some 400 grit on there and we'll smooth off the tops of these frets all ready for crowning. So it's going to be a minute to catch up on this. Wouldn't take me long to find out if these are level or not. The noise you can hear in the background is a tumble dryer. Finally got a tumble dryer. I had nowhere to put it in the kitchen, so I put it upstairs. Believe it or not, in our living room. Now, our living room is not a living room as such, it's more of a studio with a 50 inch TV screen in there. And it's just somewhere we have with the foods on a big computer, big TV screen, and a studio. And it works great. So, there you go, you really didn't need to know that, but I've shared it. So, there you are. Right, lovely beam, 240 grit on this side, and we're just going to Scoot across these frets. Following the radius. I could see as much green marker as you can from here with the light shining on it. So To me, a little bit of green on that side there. Oh, that's it. These are all silver. That is fantastic news because it means the frets are all level. I'm just going to make sure that I have followed the radius, which I have just about. A little bit more over this side. with some lower grip paper or higher grip paper should say more fine a little bit of green there let me just check that out <coughs> just a light reflecting there so okay that phrase high right there there you go what I'll do is I'll just take some off there one I missed so let's pen up this last six or seven frets again that feels smooth as butter so we need to change the paper on this oh there you go now we're cutting it 
and there you go we have silver pen sorry we have silver all the way along the frets just check one more time it's a tiny bit high on that one It doesn't matter anyway, we could create a little bit of fall away on these end frets anyway, so if we go a bit lower that's absolutely fine. That feels really smooth all the way across, so I don't think we have any end frets anyway. And there we go, we are all good. Another brush. So fret locker, I'm going to go across the whole lot. There you go, frets are level, we're going to take a darker pen. See if I'm black, oh, got a nice blue one there. The blue should show up a little bit better, it's not a very good blue pen though. But you know, that can with a bit, that's not it, it's out of ink. Take a better blue pen, have we got a better blue pen? Oh, Hecky, no, we seem to have disappeared. Ah ha ha, I know where they are. My new whiteboard over there. <clears throat> Pens on the way out. I'm going to buy some more. They're like two quid for four. I may have a nine and a half inch radius block, a wooden one. about some 400 grit paper already on it. And if I have that's what I'm going to do just to check the radius. Okay. when ready to in a uh, fingerboard the other day. <sighs> yep, one high spot there, one little high spot there. Keep going one direction. Beautiful. Everything is now radius. All the pen is off. The radius matches all the way down the length of the guitar neck. I'm going to just go this way just for just for goodness' sake. There you go. Blah blah blah. Okay, give it one good brush in. Frets are now level, radius. We do have flat spots, we do have flat spots, it does happen. So make sure I've not removed more on one side than another, that looks absolutely fine to me. That was beautiful. Okay, one final check.
I would have removed no more than 0.2 of a millimeter off the top of these frets. It means the frets will still have 1.2 millimeters height, which is a good thing. 25% nickel silver, these frets should last a long time. So that's brilliant. After this guitar is done, I've only got one more guitar in. Uh, so I have nothing else to work on this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on some of my own projects until the work comes flooding back in. I know I've got two more coming in at the weekend and two more in any time. One on Friday. So I've got five due in. They're just not in at the moment. Uh, but that is okay. So frets are level. Just checking the height down the whole length. That's good. Really, really pleased with that. They are beautiful. Right, we are now ready for crowning. So that's something I'm going to do a little bit later on. I'm going to grab myself a cup of tea. It's about 5.45 in the morning. I'm going to grab a cup of tea because I've not had one yet. We'll come back and we'll get these, um, get these fresh crowned. So, lo and behold, we've done away with a three-cornered final for crowning. And we now use a Stumac. I think they call it a Z-file. We'll call it a Z-file over here. And what this does is it cuts the edges of the frets, but not the top. It can't cut the top because of the way it's cut, the way it's shaped. It's got a diamond abrasive edge on each side, and this is worth its weight in gold. This cost me £125, and it is amazing. And just to crown a fret, turn it over, and this does the other side. And that leaves a thin blue line down the centre of the fret. We need a cloth, clean one for cleaning. And it leaves a thin line down the centre of the fret and this is a contact point between the string and the fret. That is not quite thin enough. So we're gonna go again, just over the top. Go. And again, still not quite thin enough. So this is where we will go back and get our three corner file. And we will just roll over these edges at the centre. So using a combination of files is always going to be a good thing to do. But now you see we have a thin blue line right down the centre of that fret. And that fret is now recrowned. Once it's recrowned like so, I will take my crowning file. Or else a groove built in. And just to remove any burrs, It'll remove any unevenness and we'll just go across and that is one fret beautifully recrowned. We then check that we've taken off no height. If we do it'll rock, it doesn't rock. So what we're going to do is we're going to show again. In the olden times I would have just used the 3.3 edge file, done it manually, then gone with the crowning file. But now with this great tool, this just does all most of the work for you. It, just, it is so much quicker. So again, turn it over. Beautiful thin line all the way down the centre there. Clean the file. Give it a wipe. Again, wipe the file. Any unevenness, this will remove it. Beautiful. Still level, go one back. And the last one I'm going to do on camera. Just working frets. You can feel if there's any unevenness, just feel a little bit there, but that's now all gone. 
we saw that thin blue line down the centre we check the height of the fret again check one forward one back everything's still good and we move on to the next one we're going to carry on we've done three we've got 19 more to do it's 22 fret neck this one so I'm going to crack on get them all done once they're done we can come back we'll start rolling over the beveled edges uh, just remove any burrs in fact I could show you exactly how to do that now let me take my smoothing file my number four cup Swiss file and all I'm going to do is now where we've got these edges I'm going to just roll over these edges we do have a safe edge on the bottom I always have a safe edge down so we don't cut into the neck and it's just removing the burrs on the frets I've done same here because I'm going with a very hardly any bevel at all on these strokes and we've rolled over the edges of the bevels once they're sanded they will be super super smooth and I've got this side sorted I'll have to turn the neck round for that so I'm going to carry on get the crowning done <coughs> once that's done do the beveled out edges then we can move over to the polishing table hey guys so uh, I've moved on a little bit with the neck bevels were all done yesterday I've also rolled over the beveled edges just with a flat file uh, basically I have a safe side no cut on that side and it's just a matter of rolling over the bevels blah 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 from each side then over the centre and this will just soften the bevels up for when I actually go over with sandpaper in a bit uh, then I've removed all of the tape just to check that the level is spot on got my Veritas precision straight edge there got the neck straight and I've checked the frets in all three areas, centre, outside, inside, the neck is dead straight on all three edges. I've created a tiny bit of fall away down this end, as is normal. And I'm going to tape this up again now. And we're now we are tape this up again, and we are now ready for polishing the frets. Now I'm happy that we're all level, we're all crown nice. We are ready for polishing them up. Uh, I may just do a bit more of a roll over with sandpaper on the edge of the frets. In fact, I will do. Plenty of tape here, got to get all tape back up, then we're going to go over, back over to the um, polishing bench over there. We're going to get the neck in a vice, then we're going to get these frets all polished up. We'll be checking all the time that they are staying level, there's no reason for them not to be. And uh, once that's done, we can get it all, get the nut put on and we can get it back on the guitar and get the guitar moving. Okay, I've dropped off the neck for a short while because we are going to replace this push pull pot with a push push pot and what I always like to do is I like to draw a little map or a key of what is going to be happening because it is a little bit complicated especially for a novice so what we do is we, I've colour coded each wire there are four white wires on here but I've colour coded them and if you see here the blue one coming from the middle lug of the push pull is going to lug one on the volume all the way and I've colour coded it blue same with the red one going to where it's going, I've colour coded it red. The green one, I've colour coded green. And the same one down here, I've colour coded black. The earth wire always goes to earth anyway. So there is my little key code, which tells me where every wire needs to go. Just to make sure I don't mess anything up in case this diagram is wrong, I will also take photographs, which I'll do right now, to show me where, where each wire goes. And this is just that way. I just know where everything's going to be and I'll just make sure I can see everything. I can see the first two wires there. I can see, I can see every single wire there on that diagram. Again, I'm going to come round just to check everything. Just make sure I can see everything before I take a picture. That all looks very good. So I can't really go wrong. Oh, I've got my finger in the way of that one. Let's have a look again. No, I haven't. That's good. So I've got two good pictures. These have been massive, been 20 megapixel pictures. So if I need to check anything, I can always get these on my computer and go and have a proper look at them later. So that is all good. So I'm going to set up the soldering iron. I'm going to remove this push-pull pot and replace it with a push-push pot. Same value. This is a, it's an audio pot. It's an A250K. I've already checked that the spline is right for the knob. It is an 18 uh, spline one so it's exactly right same stem and everything so it's going to work absolutely fine the only difference slightly possibly is this is an alpha brand I don't know what brand this one is 
but I could only get Alpha brand anyway. It looks to be pretty much an Alpha. This top lug is different, but the rest of it looks pretty much the same. Just as A250 and whatever. I'm going to keep hold of these myself. But anyway, I'm going to crack on with that. I'm going to get that off, solder the other one in, and then I'll test the electrics. So just to show where we are, I've got the pot in. Push, push in. That's fantastic news. Uh, I've not wired all of it, but I have wired a bit of it. Well, I've wired half of it. I'll tell you why I've wired off. I actually changed these two wires to the colour I'd got on my little mat there. I left the other two white ones in there which were marked up green and black. But this way it helps me when I wire up to here, the volume pot, and to the five-way switch. And I know exactly where these are going to go now. That one's going to go to there and the blue one's going to go to there. Really, really easy. I can cut them to the right length. The earth wire here is just going to go to the top. And that's everything wired in. All I really want to do is I just want to just want to lower this pot a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a knob. What we must always do when removing a knob from a push push pot is we must grab the stem when it's in the out position. Otherwise we're going to pull the whole pot apart. See where I got hold of it there look? And now that is still working. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo this I'm going to get it going the right way. I'm going to bring that right to the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the screw with one underneath closer to the top. So what I want to do is I just want to get rid of this momentarily. It's a much, much easier way than doing this and that is the easy way and that's just pulling it off. Let's get these out of the way. And what I want to do is I want to just bring this up a couple of millimetres just so I've not got so much sticking out at the top and that is going to be perfect. So let's get that there, get that screwed back on. Can be a little bit fiddly, be a lot easier if I sat down. And that is going to be fine. So I'm just make sure we're lined up where I need to be with that, that's good. Tighten up. Again, check that we are where we need to be, that's perfect. Knob all the way in. Turn where I need to be, press down. And there we go, we're right at the base now. It's not going to go out anymore, but that is right where we need it, beautiful. Very happy with that. So now I get the rest wired in. Just gonna make sure we don't keep twisting this around too much. We don't want to be causing a kerfuffle where one is not needed. So let's just go like that. Gonna finish off wiring up. Once that's done, we can get this screwed back down, we can test the electrics, so then we can move back on to the neck. And here we go, everything wired in. Uh, everything's correct, everything fits. Just turn over, make sure all the wires are going to fit inside, which they are because I've already checked. And there you go, that's everything inside. In, out, in, out, in, out. So that's everything working. I can get the screw. Well, I'm going to get it checked first. Once it's checked, we'll get the screws back in and then we can move back onto the neck. We'll get a knot on the neck, blah, blah, blah. We'll come back and we'll get start getting everything back together. Final stretch on the frets, we are just polishing them up. I've already been across with some 600 grit, which is the first of the six grits. We go 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. Uh, before I start polishing the frets, which is really quite simple but boring, is I go, I roll over the bevels. To remove any burrs we've left on there, just rolling over the bevels. I've already done it with this 400 grit. Then I polish the frets, and I'm going to just roll over again one more time with the rest, with what have you got left of this 600 grit paper here. So it's just a matter of, and all this is doing is just removing any sharp edges we may have left. Chances are there are no sharp edges because these have been buffed and polished a few times. It's just to get rid of anything I might have missed, because I like to do it. 
Same the other side. And this is the last time I roll over the edges because every other polish now is going to, going to be straight across the frets. Now I've already done the frets with the 600 grit and they're looking fantastic. And why do we polish? Two reasons. One, to remove the scratches which we put in that way when we're leveled and two, to bring them to beautiful shine. So when it comes to polishing, we don't polish that way again. We polish this way and we're over the top into the corners. I've already done it with 600 grit so this paper is just about spent, there's nothing left on it. It is just paper, not sandpaper now. But there you go, and they are beginning to look really, really nice already. So anyway, I've already done this, so we'll discard that, get rid. I'm going to take my brush, brush off what I can. They are looking beautiful already. They look really nice to me. Oh, feel so good, so smooth. And what I do is, once I have gone this way, I come back this way. So the next one will be the 800 grit, which is there. Blah, 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 blah. And again, nice and steady. Top. And this, don't really need to do the sides. I like to do the sides on the first and second roll with the 600 and the 800. But once that's done, I'll just be going across the tops with the rest of the paper. It's the tops that have the scratches, really, because this tops would remove the material from. So there you go, you get the idea. I've got five more bits of paper to go. Then a couple, I'll, I'll do a couple of uh, runs with the rubbers from Crimson Guitars. Once that's done, may finish off with steel wool, I don't know yet. I don't mind finish off with steel wool on a removable neck. Um, so I could well do that. Anyway, I will come back and show you the results or show you how they look once we get near to the end. And uh, we can finally get this one done. Here are the frets all done and they look amazing. And I did finish these off with steel wool. Now, steel wool, why steel wool? Let me tell you something about steel wool. You get a lot of people so you shouldn't use steel wool, this, that, the other, because in the pickles, this, that, the other, but it's really blah, 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 it's like 600 grit, blah, 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 blah. What a load of bunkum. I had one person, I think it's a person, never quite sure nowadays, co go and leave a, a uh, comment on one of my videos saying, why are you using steel wool? Why don't you use such and such a cloth? Well, such and such a cloth I've never heard of, but this is the reason I use steel wool. And I've just finished these off with steel wool. Six grits of paper and steel wool. And my goodness, no amount of rubbers or polishing compound or anything is going to get them frets looking as good as these. These look amazing. And I mean amazing. I'm not using that word lightly. These look absolutely fantastic, these frets. They are glass-like, super smooth. They are beautiful. So, I'm going to whiz over, just hold that in there, Going to whisk over to the other bench, going to remove all of the tape. Um, we'll give the neck a wipe down, remove all the uh, detritus and muck and scum and grime and whatever. Um, and we'll get it all ready to go back on the guitar. What a beautiful looking thing. Now, recently I've been using rubbers to finish off the frets. And rubbers are okay, but they don't bring you a shine like this. This is just fantastic. It's a little bit more hard work. Um, but look at these frets, I've, I've lost the steel wool again. They are fantastic. Oh, I've got it, here you go. And how I do it, once I've done the six grits of paper, what I do is I take the steel wool, and I go all down the side of the bevels first, then I will come over, and it's just a matter of getting in over the top, getting in each side, far side, near side, then back over the top. And these are fantastic, look at that. No polish on there, we don't need polish, why do we need polish? I've never used polish for polishing frets. They are beautiful. I cannot wait to get this tape off and show you how wonderful these frets are.
This is where I start enjoying the fruits of my labour when I have peeled off the tape and cleaned the neck with a little bit of oil. And there you go, that is a freshly refretted fender neck. It looks beautiful. There you go, have a look at the sides, the tops, every angle you want. There, there, what a beautiful looking thing. I'm very pleased with this. So what are we going to do? What, what do we got to do now? Well we need to get a knot in there. As mentioned, I do not have a bow knot that fits, it's not wide enough. So we're going with a standard fender knot made of a uh, substance called cycloback. It's basically a man-made bone. It's very, very similar. Probably even the same stuff as the Graftec Tusk or the Graftec New Bone, the man-made derivatives of ivory and bone. Really pleased with this fingerboard. I gave it three coats of oil. It's just been cleaned with oil. And I think that stain is gonna stay in there. Now I need to clean up this slot a little bit for the new knot, but, well, oh, really, really nice. That looks, and have a look here in the light of the window. Yeah, that looks great. Beautifully rounded over bevels. No sharp edges on there at all. One little chip on the fingerboard there. I didn't repair that, I thought I'd leave that in just for a little bit of mojo. This happened after I'd taken the frets out quite a bit after, so. You know, it wasn't that it, was, it, would have been, it would have been a pain to fix, it's just that I thought, you know, that looks pretty good, gives it a little bit of mojo. These fret edges are beautiful. So a real close look, they feel really nice. Very happy with how these have come out. But it's all about the client. I'm hoping the client's happy. I'm sure the client will be happy. These are great. So there you go. All ready to go back on the guitar. I'm going to get a nut, going to slot, get it in that slot, I'm going to get it glued in, going to get it cut to width, get it glued in, and we'll look at uh, cutting the slots for that. I'm not going to film everything because it's quite a long winded process. Time is against me today, it's Thursday afternoon, I have a pool match tonight, which is fantastic news for me because it's, uh, it's what some people call uh, Halloween and they celebrate that, the kids go around knocking on doors, trick or treating, whatever. We won't get any of that tonight, me and my wife, because I'll be out at a pool match and she's meeting me there, straight from work. So we got out of that one. Brilliant. So that's it, going to crack on with this. I uh, don't think I'll get it finished today, but um, we might get the neck on the guitar and that will be a good thing. Can I ask a question? What happened to pencils? Here, I have a pencil. Tone Tech Limited. Okay, Tone Tech. Is that Tone Tech Luthier Supplies where I get my bits from? But the thing is, I've just sharpened this pencil. I have about 10 pencils in this workshop. That's the only one that's sharp. What happened to pencils? The lead, it's not lead now, is it? Graphite, breaks every five or six millimeters. So your pencils don't last too much. I have to, I've had to basically sharpen this about four times to actually get enough on the graphite there to have enough to draw a line and it's still not as pointed. What has happened to the quality of pencils? But anyway, let's move on to where we are. We have a nut. I've just glued in a cycloback nut blank. Cycloback is the substance fender used on their fender nuts. It's a man-made substance, it's like bone. It carves pretty well, feels great. It's very similar to graft the Graftec nuts, the Tusk or the new bone ones you get. I did have two of these. I've now only got one for some reason I've mislabeled one in the last couple of days. It's not gone on with a guitar, I don't know where it is. So I have to get this one right. So I've glued it in. I didn't as much glue it in as cut it to shape or cut it to width, line it up, get it where I needed it, and just drop some super glue in the back part and let it suck itself in, which is exactly what it has done. So that is now fixed in. I have filed over the edges using files, believe it or not. It's just a matter of getting some tape on there and just shaping it. Shaping it so a nice round at the sides, which I've already done. I'm just showing you that from the camera, really. And uh, that looks fantastic. But the knot is far too high. Very much too high. So I'm going to need a better file. 
I don't have a three-quarter file there, which I was going to use for crowning back in the day. I was going to grind the edges, in fact, to ground one edge there. But I never used it for that. But the thing is, this file, it is my best cutting file. It will get right in and it can remove material. Not a great load, but it's a nice sharp file and it will get stuff moving. And that's great. I'll see where I am. I could save this dust, couldn't I? Mix it with the bone dust I've got and we could create a... Like you get semi synth oil, it'll be semi-natural bone. A half bone and a half cyclovac or whatever gravitate you use. And I don't think I'm going to waste this. I'm going to scrape it up. Because that's really nice fine dust. And that'll be great for filling in. If I need to fill a nut slot, I've cut too deep, I can fill it with that, drop some super glue in there. And it'll be really great. It would work really, really well. So let's, uh, let's save that. So you know what? Forget it. I can't bother to save it. I'm working, I've got bad things to do but save little bits of bone dust. I do have a bag full anyway, I've saved it in the past. What I'm going to do with this is just bring it down where it's getting close to the height I want. I'm going to sort of angle it back. Mm, it's not really angling back much, but... Start getting it down to where we need it to be. Right, and what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to mark it up for the strings. There's two ways I could do this. One, I could copy off the old knot, put the old knot on there, and mark up where the strings go. There's two reasons I can't do that. One, I snap the old knot in off, and two, it was to say that the nut slots were in the right position. Are they in the right position? Right, I can have a look. I'll tell you what I do is the knot. Here's the original knot. I'll take a little bit of super glue. Super glue never sticks for me. It'll stick my fingers, it never sticks where I want to stick. But let's get a little dob on there. See if we can just get this to stick together. If I do, it'll be the first time ever. No, sorry a minute. Just bin that. Absolute waste of time. I hate super glue with an absolute passion. Hate the stuff, always have hated the stuff, probably always will hate the stuff. Never really works. So anyway, there is the nut. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the old fashioned way. And we're going to take a nut or a spring, a, a string spacing rule. This gubbins, this is set to set your markings for your strings. And I've already got two blue ones marked here. Look, and what these do is, they space them exactly how you need them. All you do is you get your first and your sixth string lined up and once you're happy that they are where you want your strings to be they are the two you use. So let's go try. So this is a wide quite a wide neck this one. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five two, three, four, six. So this looks to me to be about the one I need. I'm going to mark this up. I will try and show you where we are. I don't use a measurement if it's 36.5 or what have you. I don't use that kind of gubbins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mark here and line that up where I want it to be, about 3 mil inside. One, two, three, four, five, and this one here. That might actually not be wide enough. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, this one looks good. This looks good. I'm not going to quite go that wide. One, two, three, four, five. This looks great. Let's try this one. I'm going to rub that one off. One, two, three, four, five. See where the two red marks are? I'm going the wrong way with that. That's a wide one. That's the not so wide. So this is where I need to be. So okay. That's looking great. So I'm going to go where these red marks are here. This one and this one. 
and line them up to the outside and all I'm going to do is with the pen I'm going to mark off the six strings you see here one two three four five six okay let's go there this is looking good one two three four five six and I'll explain how this rule works you know we've got wide slots here thinner slots there and as you slide this long you want your two markings so that'll be string six five four three two one once you've got the two outside ones corresponding to how wide you want to go it could be between that blue one and that one or this one and that one you just once you've got these two lined up where you're going you just mark the two outside ones and the one two three four in between so I'm just going to check again that I've got them exactly where I want them to be no not brilliant so good thing about this is when we mark them in pencil we can rub it off and we can redo them that's perfect And that is much better and now I've got these lines what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really thin file and I'm going to mark each one of where I need to cut the slot I'm going to take my number 10 file and I'm just going to cut just start it off And what I've done is I've cut a groove where I marked each string and that will now correspond to where I'm going to cut the slots for said string. I always cut with the 10 because it just makes a little notch in there and I can't go wrong with the file. So we have those lined up. I know you can't really see from where you are but you can, I'm sure you do understand what I'm talking about. And there we go, we have each of those strings lined up. We have a little notch cut in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's get in the right place. One, two, three, four, five. Six. That is perfect. Each one's cut. Now what we need to do is we can go and cut each slot corresponding to which string. So 10, 46, I have a 10 and a 26 here, but 10's already cut. Come up to the 26. Let's make sure this is tight. And all I'm going to do is I'm not going to cut go deep, I'm just going to start, just going to start it off. That's a 1026. I'm going to go with a 1336 with 13 being string 2. 36 being string 5. Don't go too deep. And then we have finally. The 17 and the 46, 17 being string 3, 46 being string 6. So we now have each groove started off, uh, it's going to be the exact width of a string that is going to go in there. We haven't started off and now what we can do is, we can have a look at where we need to be. I already know we need to go a lot, lot deeper, but for the time being, that is good enough. I'm just going to... I'm going to slightly back. So look at that 17, because I know the 17 blade's really sharp. Just going to go a little bit more, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go get the tuners on. Get some strings on. I'm going to get this knot done. 
Last one, where's that? Here it is. And there you go, we've started each nut slot off. They're all the right width. Obviously we're not right depth yet, but now we've got somewhere to work. We can get the strings on, get the tuners on, and we can start cutting these slots to depth. Once we've got the depth right, we're going to remove the strings again, and then we're going to shape the top of the nut again. I'm probably going to do this off camera now, uh, because time is getting close, I need to get ready to go out in a little bit. So I'm going to crack on with that, and I'll come back and show you results later. Apologies guys, because you ain't going to see a great deal of what I'm doing right now, because um, I'm having to use my night light, because the light outside is not fantastic, as being in the winter months. And it's around 9.30 a.m. in the morning, and I'm just finishing setting up the guitar now. Let me just explain what I've done since I've refitted the neck. Uh, obviously I've fitted the nut, I cut slots in the nut, not to the depth required, but to the spacing required. And we have the strings on a set of Deodario 1046s. These gubbins um, and things that I have done. I've bought the guitar uh, up to string tension. String tension is correct. We're tuned to E flat standard, uh, one semitone, uh, half semitone. Uh, you know, I mean, half a tone. Uh, it's a step down or half a step down, should I say? Set the radius at the bridge, nine and a half inch radius. Set the string height above the 12th fret, we've got just about 1.5 millimetres on the 12th fret on the high E and about 1.75 on the low. For those of you who use non-metric, we're looking at around about 0 0.63, 0 0.64 on the high E and 0 0.75, 0 0.76 on the low E. Now that's if we're using a non-metric action gauge. Uh, I've got a tiny bit of relief under the 7th fret, 0.25mm, I've got no idea what that is in uh, non-metric or imperial. So we've got everything set as we need it, the guitar is tuned to pitch and now we can start addressing the nut slot height. And as a rough guide, I like the space between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string on the low E to be around about 0.3mm, maybe a little bit more, and on the high E, or the first string, about 0.2mm. So I'm going to aim for those, and once I've done that, then I will look and I will cut the slots by eye. So I'm going to have a slight gradient going a little bit further away from the fret at this end to a little bit lower at that end. Now I've already come and had a little glimpse at them on the low end. I've got 0.3 on the low E. And there's no buzz at all, so we can go quite a bit deeper on that one. So I'm going to use, well, I remember where they are, my Hosco. Not swap files. It's a set of three, but there are six cuts, and this cuts a 1046 set. Well, this one was for strings one and four, which is a 1026. This one's for two, sorry, this one's for two and five, which is a 36, 13, 36, and this one is for strings three and six, which is a 17 and a 46. Being a 1046 set, we're going to go with the 46. I'm going to slightly angle the file backwards toward the machine head. And I'm just going to go a little bit deeper, not going to go mental. Cut too low, you'll be replacing the nut. As mentioned earlier in the video, I'm going with a Fender Cyclovac nut. We'll stick the tuner on just so I know, I know I've dropped a little out of tune, so we know we've cut into that. And I will go, I will err on the side of caution. I don't want to go too low and have to replace a knot because it will be a bit of a ball ache. So anyway, nice and steady. I'll just flare open. Once I have the slots to the depth I like, I'm going to remove the strings again and we're going to file over the top of the knot because I like these strings, especially below the three lowest strings, I like them to be half in, half out, not buried. I don't mind the high strings being buried and under the top because we need a good grip on these, but these three can be half in, half out, or maybe two thirds in, one third out. I do actually quite like that. Nice 
are still way high. So when you're doing this, take your time. Not a race. And that's the buzz we like to get. So that one is cooked fine. So I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is a 36. This is quite a lot high. So let's go with a 36. Again, I do need to cook quite a bit, but I'm not gonna go gung-ho. This is not my sharpest file because it does take quite a bit of work. But you do that one day, you think, oh, I'll go get right into this, and you cut it, and all of a sudden, you're cutting into wood. Okay, change of tack. We're going to use a different part of the blade. I'm going to use this part of the blade, which is sharp because it's hardly been used ever. Close. Making sure I'm angling slight, ever so slightly back, not too much. We're just waiting for a little bit of buzz. Very close, beautiful. Once I've cut with a sharp file, I can go back to a bit more of a blunt file, so I'm not gonna to cut too deep. Just shaping, I'm just shaping a little bit. Just buzzing, I like that. Low E. Okay, so these two are cut. I'm gonna carry on, get the next four done. I'm going slightly lower toward the higher strings. Once that's done, we'll stretch the strings once more and the guitar will be finished. Well, almost finished, not exactly finished. What I'll do then is I'll just loosen the strings, we'll pull them to the side and I'll reshape the top of the knot with a flat file and that will be it. And there we are guys, all done and what a fabulous project project this one has been. What is that? How good is that? It is a Fender Stratocaster. It is a standard model 2005 I believe. Is it 2005? Yeah it is 2005. Remember from earlier. And it came in and it needed a refret. It was having a refret, so it's had a refret. But not only that, we've actually removed the lacquer from the fingerboard. We've re-radiced we've re the fingerboard. Then we've re-stained the uh, neck. I've gone over with three coats of oil. I think that looks pretty good. It's not a perfect match to the headstock, but it looks pretty good. And the good thing about this is, the player's fingers are not going to stick to the horrible lacquer that was on there. So I really like that. What a lovely, lovely guitar. Put a brand new knot on there. Cyclovac, which is a Fender, a proper Fender official knot, which I've hand carved. That's beautiful. The guitar is set up. I also added a push-pull pot rather than the push-push-pull thingy, which is really, really difficult to grip these knobs, especially if you've got sweaty fingers. Uh, so, push-push. You can just dob it, and you can just dob it back. Brilliant. How wonderful is that? Fantastic. So this one is all done. It's in tune. It's tuned to E flat, standard tuning in E flat. So it's half a step down. 
and what a beautiful, beautiful guitar. It's been a brilliant project, it's been a long project. This video also is a long one, it's getting up for about two hours. Uh, shame I just sliced this side of my finger off. Um, I was sorting some fret out down here where we had a little bit of, a little bit was sticking out and I sorted it out and I got some super glue on my finger here. So I was scraping it off with Stanley Blade like as you do and I wasn't watching what I was doing. I went Tsh! and sliced a big flappy trap door out of my finger. So I glued it back on. I've got a tape on it. It's not hurting. I held it up to the Lord. Um, it's actually all right. I can work with that on and it's, I hope it's going to heal quick. But anyway, that all done. This guitar is finished. What a beautiful thing. It looks the part. And it, it really, it just, it's a great guitar. So all I have got to do, I forgot all about it actually, is I've got to stick on the back plate, which I've got right here. So I'm going to do that while I wrap up this video. So here we go with either six screws there. Stick these on. Tremolo blocked off as shown earlier in the video. And that's how the player prefers his guitar set up. It's coming for it tonight. In fact, it's coming for both of his guitars tonight. There's this one, it was a PRS Studio. Is it Studio Custom or Studio Deluxe? Whatever fantastic guitar. Again, I'm going to be putting a push push pot on there, uh, replacing the push pull pot. So let's do a little recap of what we've done on this one. Fender Standard Stratocaster 2005 model. It has got Pink Floyd custom wiring. I don't know what it does. I just know there is a push pull on the second tone knob or the, the tone that is furthest away from the neck. Uh, I imagine that is not a tone. I imagine it's some kind of phase or out of phase switching. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. It could possibly be a coil tap. Again, I don't know. I do know it changes the sound of the bridge pickup. Uh, does it does it fade the bridge pickup in on the neck or anything? I'm not sure. But anyway, back plate is on there. The guitar is finished. Wonderful guitar. Um, ready to go. So one more time. Have a look at it. And that is it. No point me waffling on anymore because I have another guitar to do this afternoon. Um, and I can't remember anything else about this guitar. So if I've forgotten something, I do apologise. But let's move on to the next project. So this one is finished. It will be going out tonight. Uh, just before I go, remind you of my website, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. It's also fretfriend.co.uk. I am Victor. I am your fret friend. And until next time, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I will see you next time.